Buongiorno, Skydive sisters and brothers. Hello. Hello, my name is Yuri and I'm a skydiver. Hi, my name is Anna. I am USPA FF instructor and five-time Big Way Ukrainian national record holder. I'm running a digital agency in Kiev. I'm a music pilot for my father. My name is Tanya. I'm USPA AFF instructor and skydiving judge. But this season is the first in 14 years that I'm not jumping. And I'm not jumping because of the war. On the 24th of February, I woke up to the sound of explosions and understood that it had all started. I went to the room where my son was peacefully sleeping and hugged him and we stayed this way until he woke up. My name is Dmitro. I'm a soldier just now. Mamchik, I went in the room. Before the war, uh, I skydived, worked uh, in several companies in the top manager positions. I have traveled uh, the world a lot. Christ, uh, children. Before the full invasion, I was living my ordinary life, teaching skydivers AFF, working to develop uh, the biggest drop zone in Ukraine, Skydive Borough. Uh, we wanted to create the best drop zone where skydivers can find what they want and can feel like home. That was part of my mission. We organized safety days, courses and events for skydivers. Hello. I'm Anna and I'm in love with indoor free fly and skydiving. Last year before the war I worked in United Arab Emirates. In the never ending summer there, I finally made my small dream come true. I got my own rig. It was such a pleasure to start jumping with it. I'm sure you know what I'm telling about. I touched the sky in Ukraine, Poland, Spain, Czech Republic, Serbia, United Arab Emirates and Brazil. It's my hobby, my passion huge part of my life. Yes, despite the fact that I have not so many jumps for now, but it's never enough. In the beginning of 2022, I came back to my hometown. All I wanted was to hug my family and spend some time with them in Kyiv. The war separated us again. We are in different countries now. This year should be the best in my last five years. Uh, but uh, 24th of February, everything dramatically changed for me and uh, for a million of the other people. One of those people who didn't live under the illusion. The war in my country lasted for over eight years. It was just smaller and geographically far from me. At the beginning of 2022, I realized that a full-scale war was coming. On the other hand, deep in my heart, I had a hope that this would never happen. I had never planned to flee from Ukraine, but I had a plan for what to do in my head. More for my child, not for myself. Everything changed on the 24th of February, when my country woke up from explosion because of the mass attack from Russia. I don't remember that morning well. It was shock. A shock and tears. I cried a lot. The first thing I see, said then, Kyiv was bombed. Endless messaging, endless calls to family and friends. How are you? Where are you? Are you okay? Oh shit, did a bomb blast nearby? Is the road blocked? How did they shoot? The whole family died? It was endless horror and fear. Fear for the lives of my family, friends, children those who are under the bombs and bullets of mad dictator and crazy bloodthirsty invaders. Putin and Russia aggressively attacked my country. Uh, missile, weapons, warplanes and helicopters, rapists, soldiers and the murders. My only wish was to take him to a safe place, but I decided to follow the plan and wait until the roads not so loaded. All my entire soul was steering me to do something, help, but I could not. My son makes me feel tied up and I had to be with him, because the sound of explosions continued and we could sometimes also hear the gunshots near our windows. The first few days I felt a bit lost and didn't know what to do, but I realized I definitely stay in my country 
and I will fight for my freedom. Where are you? Are you all right? I'm okay. I'm in territorial defense. I'm in the army. I'm on the front. Take care. 21st century. Fucking 21st century. What's going on? I quickly decided I could protect myself and others too. Uh, I am uh, ready to kill for the safety of my country. I am ready to fight with uh, any enemy force. It doesn't matter how many tanks, people, ships Russia has. I'm okay. Can you help me to buy a helmet? I need a bulletproof vest. We need a car. Can you help to buy? They hit our car, but everybody is alive. Can you help get another one? Yes, yes, I'm looking for. Yes, I will send it. Nobody is coming to you. Okay, I'll take it to you myself. Roads, messages, roads, military stores, roads, messages, and tears. One step ago, one step with a broken leg. At the beginning, I could only help online because my leg was broken in two places, but it's another story. If you look at it, these are these tiny holes. You turn it off and it falls like a shrapnel. No, there is no chance of living. One body is like this, and the other body is like this. The middle of the road. The cap is like the cherry pie. So, in February, I became a volunteer in Prague. Helmets, bulletproof vests, tactical medicine, and so on were purchased for my friends and relatives who stay and protect Ukraine and freedom. Добрий ранок, ми з України. Прилетіло під сраку. Ворожі кацапи майже прямою наводкою хотіли підбити командира команди шведів, але дуже чудово, що їм це не вдалося. On the 1st of March we left Kyiv and on the 3rd of March my sister and I took him to the Romanian border, where they could cross the border on foot and go to Istanbul, where my other sister lived. In the evening of the same day I was already back in Kyiv and hardly made it until the curfew. The next month I can call volunteer madness. Minimum of sleep, maximum of tasks completed. Finding supplies, buying, helping everyone I could. This all was under a huge psychological pressure. My father was in the occupied territories in Ukraine. Finally, he luckily managed to escape. For the first time in my life, I asked people on Facebook for money to buy a car for my friends from the army who lost their car in a battle. The majority of donations came from skydivers. The same as when I was collecting donations for the second car. From last year, I'm also an investor of Top Zone here near Kyiv in the city of Berdanka. The city of Berdanka was occupied for 38 days in the beginning of this war, and more than 80 people killed in the city of Berdanka. Our Top Zone was heavily damaged too, but will recover. Uh, so, this spring, when the city of Berdanka was liberated by the army, I go, he, go there to check what's with this outer drop zone and meet soldiers who were stationed there from the 72 Armored Brigade. And they show me a wreckage of downed Russian plane that bombed the city of Berdanka. Uh, I collected the wreckage of uh, this downed airplane and made uh, keychains from this. And I announced that I would send it as a gift to everyone who donate more than $1,000 to a fund to buy more drones for Ukrainian army. Uh, it looks like this, and I collected more than one and a half million dollars for now and delivered more than 200 drones to Ukrainian army. I will proceed with this. About 20 years of my life are related to skydiving. I had breaks because of injuries, pregnancy, labor and a newborn baby. After that I worked in a wind tunnel for three years and did not have much for skydiving. But all of these years I was connected to a skydiving family. Same now, our technical medicine coach Dmitro too is also a skydiver. We have been friends for many years. Actually, he is my former student. He was my AFF student and still calls me his Sky Mommy. 
I'm joking that he is my tactical medicine dad. Ну що, як воно на дискотеках? У нас живе собака, з якої всі. Це ближче вже до нас, да? З якої усі п'ють кров. Кліщі, блохи, комарі. Погано бути собакою. Дуже погано. As soon as my leg healed, I came to Ukraine, completed all the tests and received my driving license. Yep, I didn't have a car before. It was a totally new experience for me. Old cars, armored cars, rusty cars, diesel cars, car parts, car wreckling. These words stay favorite for a long time in my girl's slang. And in one moment we started purchasing and bringing cars for the armed forces of Ukraine. Long roads, many countries, cars from Czech Republic, Poland, Bulgaria, Germany, Netherlands and Switzerland. For sure, it was not easy with zero driving experience to drive big cars full of army stuff doing in one day 700 or 800 kilometers behind the wheel. I'm not sure, but I think for today we purchased over 40 cars, CUVs, minibuses, ambulances and even armored cars. All of them were repaired, repainted and sent to the hottest points of the war. We had lots of difficulties. Canister fuel limits in Poland, suddenly broken cars, even penalties at the Hungarian border because of Ukrainian Czech flags on the cars and many more. After the beginning of the war, I was in Kiev, Dnipro, Kharkiv. It's very painful to see your country under the terror, lose friends. We will never drink a cup of coffee again. Every day after 24th of February, I'm under stress and constant worry for loved ones. Now we start a new direction of volunteer activity. 3D printing, launch systems for drones and other important things for the air intelligence. We obtained new skills very quickly, uh, often in was under fire. Kyiv, Irpin, Bucha, Kharkiv, uh, Pitomnik, Dementievka, Tsirkuny, Pruvyanka, Ternova and other villages uh, were liberated by ordinary people like me. My husband and I started to help our friends who joined the Ukrainian army. We helped them with the most necessary aid, collect and send medical kits to the front line. But very soon we realized that many people whom we sent medical kits to were people without military experience and didn't know how to use it. When I managed to take my son to a safe place, I started insisting that he invites me to a pre-medical care course he holds for the army. I told about that my friend and skydiving colleague Tanya, who also wanted to join. So my sky sister Anna Vashenka and I quickly start learn how to teach people tactical combat casualty care. We had to learn a lot of new skills. It was difficult, but we made it. Now we are first aid instructors and uh, teaching people how to save lives. Just like AFF, but there's no fun here. At the beginning of April, Metro found time to teach us. We dived into work fast. It was not so hard uh, to requalify considering our previous instructor experience. Same as in skydiving, in tactical medicine there exists a clear algorithm for what you are supposed to do. It's like a malfunction, but on war you have more scenarios of how the thing might go. We teach the army with the March algorithm according to TCCC protocol. And we continue to learn and develop our own skills in this field. We attend courses, practice in hospitals and we are grateful to our doctors who are ready to share the knowledge and experience with us. Цифри. Більше 12, менше 30. I believe we are doing something helpful and really needed when we teach the army. We are doing everything possible for our upcoming victory. We are also holding trainings for civilians and donations from these events are spent on educational equipment and supplies for first aid kits 
for our warriors. I know that as a skydiver, you know, this is where I'm feeling of connection with the skydiving family when you visit any other zone in the world. Uh, and I want to share my experience, what I feel. I, this year, I don't met anyone on the drop zone because we don't jump in. But I feel this connection to my skydiving family here in Ukraine because part of the part of the drones we bought, uh, I sent the Ukrainian army to the units where skydivers on active duty right now, they're fighting for freedom. Somebody asked me, did I feel fear? Uh, fear in uh, the war is very similar to fear during the jump. Uh, is uh, the one's chemistry. If you are afraid, you jump anyway. And uh, in the war too. Skydiving community in Ukraine and around the world help us to buy and send first aid kits uh, to the front line. I appreciate this help. When you watch this, we will be in the east of our country helping with wounded in the hospital. I should upsize my rig. It's very important if you see me first asking me about my rig. Control me, please. I am grateful to all the people around the world who understand the real situation. Especially, I am proud of Skydiving Society. Once again, I feel that this is my family and now it's bigger because it went international almost everyone except for the russians we used to be friends with russian skydivers they visited our drop zones for boogies and competitions but only one person said me that he was sorry after the 24th of february only one person and these words did not really help Вот тут вони сиділи, бачите, такий укреп райончик. А ми їх повибивали. And other half of uh, skydiving community right now volunteers, they buy medical supplies, uh, drones, other equipment and sending it to our friends and to our army. So every time I open our chat where all the Ukrainian skydivers is, I feel this same feeling I feel when the drop is all the I know you understand me because you feel it too. Uh, also, I feel connection with all the skydivers in the world because many skydivers from different countries, from Poland, from the United States, from Australia, uh, send their funds and their drones and other equipment. I'm super grateful to all of you. I like the idea that the higher human goal is saving lives, and I really share it. I know that the first eight skills we teach are saving lives. At the end of our training, we usually say we wish that you never need the skills you learned from the course, but if you are in trouble, you will know exactly how to handle it. I want to tell you a story about the guy from Australia that sent five drones to us and asked not to mention his name because uh, he thinks he's not doing enough. You're doing enough, man. I miss the sky and the drums, but the sky is always with me. For that reason, we have the word sky in the name of our training center, SkyMed Forces. And I really miss my son. For the last eight months, I've seen him only once in June. I wanted to be with him on his 10th anniversary in Istanbul. Now I hope to spend at least two days or with him on Christmas or New Year because we have a lot of work here. Казахстан, место где проживают орки. Кэп, шведу. У вас там все добро? Ну, чекай, ты здесь пять тысяч человек. На другую воду не упали у нас. На третью. After our victory, most of all, I would love to see my family, friends, hug them all and have a lot of talks. 
I want to go back to skydiving, flying tunnel, travel, just be a happy person and live my life. Just know that everybody I love are safe. I want to raise my eyes and see a peaceful sky over Ukraine and never again be afraid of the sound of an airplane. But first of all, I will take a one-way ticket to the ocean coast, turn off my phone, take a deep breath and drink some pina colada. But never forget, never forgive. Freedom of the whale is the most value of our nation. We are whale because we are Ukrainians. What I plan to do after war? I'll thank myself and my family for this time. I'm going to spend my time at the seaside two or three months, uh, warm up, change my food, put on civilian clothes, uh, sleep a lot in my bed, uh, hug my children, hug my wife, my mom, uh, read uh, my children fairy tales, and write a long to-do list of the countries where we'll skydive. What we're gonna do after the win, after we win? Uh, right after we win, I'll go for a few weeks uh, vacation on the sea with my newborn son. But then when I return, uh, I promise you, we are built our drop zone. And I wanna see you all on our, our victory boogie right after our win. After victory, the first thing I would do is go to the drop zone and make a big party for all skydivers who constantly help us. Then we will think about how to restore the drop zone in Borodyanka that was occupied by Russian invaders. And of course, I plan to skydive again after our victory. I am sure we will win. I just hope this will happen soon and my son can go back to me and to his motherland. For that reason, I do everything I can to speed up our victory. Every person must do what she or he can on their own place. And I know I am doing it now. Bob Marley said, you say you love rain, but you use an umbrella to walk under it. You say you love sun, but you seek shelter when it's shining. You say you love wind, but when it comes, you close your windows. What I can add from myself? If you say that you love freedom, but you are not ready to fight for it, I'm scared when you just say freedom and do nothing. That's why I'm totally sure that our volunteer activity and donating are very significant to our victory, for our freedom, for our life. Uh, thank for everyone who shares the values of Ukraine and Ukrainians. See you on planes and in the sky, young, with smile, happy and invictable. Love you all. See you in Kyiv. Slava Ukraini. Glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. Heroes love.